I lost Stephen, and um, thanks for coming coming on. And um, we're gonna have a good chat. We got to catch up on. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for inviting me. It's really good to see. I've seen you for a while. <laughs> I know. I, I, <laughs> yeah, we go. We go. We go way back. Um, do it in select Britain. Like um, that's where we know each other. Uh, yeah. Why don't you tell us what you've been doing since your days in Insulate Britain? Since the days of Insulate Britain, uh, the first thing is not opening my mail. <laughs> I'll <I've> second that. <laughs> we are right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, and that has been to my disfortune, I've recently found out, but I'm not going to say that here. Because <laughs> <laughs> right, something happened I didn't realise. I missed some mail that I shouldn't really missed, but that was their fault because they were sending us some other mail. But uh, yeah, it, uh, before I started in, uh, joined Insulate Britain, I was an advocate for the homeless. And um, yeah, that's what I've been doing lately. Um, still advocating up until recently. Um, and I've been on the picket lines as well for the um, for all the strikes mm -hmm. that are happening. Um, the first one was an initially straight after our our, our uh, campaign. Because I don't, you was there, Josh. All right, this is for you. And bless you. All right, you was on the Dover strike. At Dover, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I could say this or not. All right, I don't know. Right, but and I I couldn't make Dover. All right, because I'd start at the same time probably as you, because I was here. Right. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Ah. Oh. All right. Right, and that was a, an email that I got that. Because I've been doing advocacy for so long, I've been nominated for an award, an upstanding member of the community. Mm. So it cheesed me off <laughs> that I couldn't do Dover after I seen your photographs in the sun <laughs> and the white cliffs. Oh. <laughs> right? It looked fantastic. You uh, so, and Steph, um, right, were beautiful. So yeah? I, actually, I and need everyone to say, else. My, my, <laughs> I was in court recently for the Port of Dover and it has now been postponed yeah. for one year. So, I can't really talk about the Port of Dover on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, okay. I would, I would as much I can, as I would love I to. Can. Um, but I can, all right. And this is for your yeah, you can. I'm, 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 you, I'm not right? neither agree nor right. disagree with anything that's about to be said. Go. <laughs> right. Well, once I seen the pictures after I came back from winning the upstanding member of the community award for all the work I'd done in September. From you know, anyway, when you've done it. Um, it stuck in my mind, yeah? And then when the campaign ended uh, in December, um, come the February, the dock strike, the dockers in Dover mm -hmm. uh, were, were going to work merrily as they do every day, but then were abruptly met by people with truncheons and, and masks to be taken away and told that their jobs weren't there no more, all right? I don't know if you realise this or remember it, but the guys, the, my only inkling of notice of this was the fact that when I was home at the time, I seen these pictures of dockers and, uh, and, and ferrymen, RMT men, who were striking and picketing on the roads that you were on. Yeah. All right? So I was worried that those dockers would not only lose their jobs, but could possibly, in six months' time, get a letter through the post to say that they've been blocking the road and could have their freedom and liberty taken away from them as well. So I zoomed down there with a couple of us and said that. And first of all, I was worried because obviously our campaign went one way and the other, they could take it as you wish. But they welcomed me with open arms. Hmm. And I and a couple of others walked the same route that you were blocking, blocked that road with an Insulate Britain banner and we were applauded. All right, we were applauded for being in solidarity with the workers that were blocking the same road for their jobs. Don't you forget that, Josh. You're a bloody legend, and all of you that were on it, regardless of what anyone else says. All right, in the media, and I've met them ever since, and they they welcome us with open arms. So I yeah. just wanted to say that. I think that's why I wanted to show that's that. That's very important. It's very important. We need to build ties between climate activists and and strikers because at the end of the day we're all trying to yeah. we're all trying to create a new con a new country a new system that benefits us all we're all on the same yeah. side absolutely 
we've all got. I I joined Insulate Britain for the fuel poverty. Yeah. yeah? So I'm thinking in my mind. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. When we started the campaign, there was three and a half million in fuel poverty. By the time we ended it, in the December, there was seven million. Today there are fourteen and a half million. Wow. One in seven people in this country are living in fuel poverty or poverty. All right. That is that. Yeah. But what you guys <laughs> are talking about is the world. Yeah. yeah? And that what blew my mind away. I was thinking, yeah, I've got to say, and I have, and we have to, got to yeah. look after each other on this island. But you guys were talking of the whole world, all right? Which was another dimension I, can't, I, couldn't, I couldn't question, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but, yeah, from where I left the campaign, I knew so much more about this, a possible solution for the most vulnerable in our country that involved uh, bettering the lives of those in the world which is obviously in yeah their i think homes, I, I th all right energy so sustainable i was energy. about to say uh insulate yeah. i feel like insulate britain should have carried on i think i think insulate, insulate britain yeah. needs to come are. back no i mean like, like, a, like an <laughs> m25 comeback i've also been here with straight to prison now so like most of, most of us are in prison like a lot of us have been to prison in, from insulate britain already like <laughs> bless you Bless wasn't you. wasn't Insulate Britain a I, unique I, I time thought, where we could just go out repeatedly? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't. I I don't know about you, but I didn't even know what I knew what the M twenty five was. Yeah, but as in where it was in the circumference of where we were on to do the blocks, I didn't have a clue. It did, it just seemed like another. Oh, it's another block. But let me show you something okay. else, Josh. Before I forget, yeah, because I keep these photos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit older than you, so I got to live on my memories. Right. There was that block, yeah? Wow. I, I, no, I, mean, I, I wasn't part of that if block, I but I, that, was the, that was the legendary one where you actually took the M25. Hang on a sec. I get so <laughs> I, I, I love... We not only took it once, we took it Yeah, that's twice. the iconic photo. All right. Oh. The iconic one. Not guilty. Found not guilty. Yours truly. Do you know what? For that block. I want to show you a picture that I've had <laughs> printed, right? And I've not showed it on the podcast Come yet. On, and the back. Now, <laughs> do, you, do you remember this one? Can you see that? Oh, wow, yeah. Not the best. Do you remember that? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> I had, that, I, had, I, had it, I had it framed. Fair play. I do, I, I look, the only reason it's not like here is because it just seems too vain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one more vain one. All right? That one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like I said to you. All right? All right? Seven and a half mil There was seven million. Yeah. And now there's double that. We... I'm telling you now, right? I've been advocating for the homeless... On, on demonstrations, I've signed picket. I uh, signed picket. Signed um, oh, what do you call it? Signed them things, you know, so that you can't. You 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 say you don't want to do it any. Um, oh, what's the word? I'm losing my my, my train of thought now. I've signed petitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the word. Signed petitions. I've been on the road on the. I've been in London. Yeah, with the unions. Yeah. yeah? I've slept outside the council offices in solidarity with the homeless. I got nowhere, all right? Absolutely nowhere, not even locally. Within 24 hours on the M25, we've done more in 24 hours, for me personally, than I've done in, in four or five years, you know? It was just bang. It was just there. And, and, and Insulate Britain is still there, all right? In my heart, it, it, it's still people who are fighting. Deepak, the disabled that can't afford to fuel their homes up, you know what I mean? The thousands that are still dying, all right? We've hit a chord, all right? And 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 I, I am so proud of, of, of our achievements and our, and our campaign. Day one, all right? I don't know. I was on there on day one. I was a de-escalator. I've never been so scared in all... Oh, I have been scared because I say it in the documentary. I'll tell you, I was as scared as when I was homeless as what I was going on mm -hmm. that road, all right? Taking that first step, all right? 
and, and that first step on the M25, I was petrified, like everyone else was on day one. No one hardly ever heard of us, and and uh, but they did hear about us in that day, and they listened. All right. I had pe this, it, also what I'm trying to say is is that the people that were behind me, as in the guys that were holding the banners, men mm -hmm. and women, yeah. all ages, I have never been so proud. All right, and so, wow, they are still there after all, what the the public was saying to me because I was trying to calm them down and tell them exactly what was happening, and I, and for one split second I thought, are they there behind me because I had my back to them, and they were still there. Men of all ages, women yeah. of all ages, vicars, you know what yeah. I mean? And you guys, oh, it, it, uh, 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 hats off, man. That takes a lot of <laughs> It did. It really did. Yeah. yeah. We do, we, I was there on the did, fifth day yeah. as well. Like, yeah. I remember. Yeah. It was... I, uh, <laughs> I, After I that... Com I compare it to jumping into a swimming pool. Like, you can tits around the edge and it's the a cold swimming pool. And it, the anticipation is actually worse than the actual water. Yes. Because when you take that jump and you land in that cold water, there's a few seconds of shock and then you climatize. And it is exactly yeah. the same That's on action. Way, it? I get it. I get that, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm, do I'm doing my non-violent direct action to the council, to yeah. the government. All right. To all those in responsibility, they're going to look after us and the planet. I think we need, we need to. Uh, and, and that's, I think we need to build planet. networks. I think. Imagine, imagine yes. if the NHS strikers and the rail strikers. Imagine instead of striking, they went into civil resistance. Imagine, imagine if the yeah, NHS exactly. workers just st started blocking roads <laughs> for NHS, and and they walked to what yeah. the banner said: "Fund the NHS, please." <laughs> Uh, like doctors and nurses yeah. like now you're gonna listen <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> like why, why we need to get more yeah. movements using the civil resistance because we all can collaborate like we can get move you know we could get uh, all different movies going together yeah absolutely absolutely would you I, I would, agree do you think people entirely. would walk in the road for the this, nhs to save it yeah yeah i believe so i believe so um i i, I just think that what can I say? Um, nothing has. We just saw. I don't know how to say it. Well, I do, but we've just been accustomed to just taking it. Yeah, saying yeah, okay, that's the way it is, and then what have you. And it's only when you've you come to the. the believe me, anyone watching. Well, all the all activists have been watching this, so I have to tell them what 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 to do. But if anyone's who's not an activist and thinking about being an activist, the only thing to do is absolutely disrupt some disrupt the whole country was the in the beginning for us was was like blocking the m25 but it could be any, any port or, 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 or any highway any any airport yeah, or any port yeah yeah exactly yeah i i, I can't <laughs> say a lot but i got like a lot of ideas that i would see i can't i'm not I saying wanna, that, I wanna say if we're talking about the i was just going to clarify mm. that neither oh, me or you are actively planning or in participation of planning or no, anyway organizing exactly. any responsible for any plans <laughs> that may happen in the future that might sound fami quite familiar familiar to this yeah we're just uh, expressing uh, just ideas hypothetical ideas <laughs> continue yeah yeah a lot of them if there's an issue a big issue that's happening in this country Rather than signing a petition or going on a little little march and then coming back home and thinking, oh, well, we've done that. That was great. There was 50,000 of us. Or there was 5,000. Or there's 1,000. Mm. Or 100. All right? And then going back home and think, yeah, drink your cup of tea and think, oh, I've done all right. No, it doesn't no. work. You don't even get recognized on your local paper. All right? You do something drastic enough. I won't say drastic. I mean imperative that, 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 that it gets heard with this media and this government and all governments because I, I i personally i'm going to take it politically now i can't vote for any party that's coming that's parliamentary party this year that's another discussion for another day i suspect but my my philosophy is that for me is that everyone is entitled to live in a safe and warm environment and live without fear 
And I never said that. That was from 1948. That was the Human Rights Act. It's all come, out, come uh -huh. together. That's a statement that I'm saying that, that our forefathers were saying years ago. All right? And no party, no party on this island will abide by that. It's an aspiration, they say. It's a, it's a, a, oh, it's a, an idea. It could be done so easily. No, it's not. We've been asking for it for eighty years. It's yes. so simple. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yes. The, 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 I, <laughs> can I, say, I think a, the problem here comes down to the fact of what level of priority are we? Like we all, we all, we all run off our priorities, right? And if social housing and fuel poverty was, was poverty was really a priority to the government, say more of a priority than war and making money then I'm pretty sure they yes. would solve the problem pretty damn quickly. If running a, a functioning NHS that made absolutely no money and just gave everyone amazing healthcare was a priority, it could be done properly. But it's exactly. not a priority. It's, yeah. it's something these politicians are burdened with from previous politicians and they don't, they don't really want it. They want to destroy it's it. It's control. It's control, Josh. They've got control. They won't give us our homes because we'll be in control. My 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 aspiration is everyone lives in a safe and warm environment and live without fear. That means I'm in control of my destiny. Anything I do after that, it's my own fault. All right, it's my own idea mm. or what have you. You imagine waking up in the morning knowing that you could turn your energy on whether it be a, well, it'd be electric yeah all right with no bills or very little bill all right so i'm warm i feel safe because i've got you know um i know i'm not going to get uh, horrible letters coming through the door saying i owe uh i don't know a thousand pound for my energy bill or what have you and i live without fear now that could be the community outside, yeah? I could be having stones thrown at me or I could have bailiffs coming at the door. But I won't have bailiffs because my, 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 my home is a lifetime tenancy, mm -hmm. all right? So I'm saying, I'm saying a lifetime tenancy with very, very low energy bills, if any, and if there's a surplus, which there more likely will be, I will give that to the poor, mm -hmm. all right? Or those that need it. Or I will give it to a school... Or a nursery, whoever needs work, you know. What I mean, single parents or parents need a, a nursery place for their kids. Whatever it could be, the whole it could be the hospital. All right, that's up to the community to decide. But if I've got something to give just by living in this premises that makes excess energy, mm -hmm. have you seen right? the? But sorry, then, have you seen the eco homes? I'm in control. That, um, yeah, it's good. Has been what building. I'm saying. That's what we're. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. But they need to start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's what, sorry, Josh. I'm talking about the homeless, the most vulnerable. So let's bring that stigma of being homeless to the limelight, all right? Let's give them a home that actually produces too much energy and which is um, the money saved from not having the bills put into the support That's network. That's a brilliant idea. So I've got, thank you, thank you. I know you, you say it, the council say it, but you go higher up than us. And they go, oh, no, we got our own contracts. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, All right. I want... no one, that's why there's no party that will, love, that will like what so, I'm saying. So I want to explain the technical <laughs> side about what you've just talked about there. So uh, it's, it's Scud yeah. who's been building his house. He's the best Scud anyway. Uh, he's been on the news a few times. But um, hmm. he's basically building a house. It's a timber-framed house. And what he's doing is putting 300 millimetres, uh, about this much, of insulation like mm -hmm. three or four times the, the the minimum required for the uk homes and he's making a proper job so he yeah. builds the house out of insulation like so he, he joins up all he closes up wow. all the gaps around the corners and okay. insulates and under the floor and under the concrete just like three times as much you need in the like the whole house is properly yeah. it's like as insulated as you could possibly make it and then he puts a he has a ground source Brilliant. heat pump in uh, for low energy heating and he has a, the every single house covered in solar panels, and the, because because Brilliant. the energy requirement for the home is so low, it's so well insulated, and it runs takes such little energy to run, yeah. that uh, the solar panels actually provide one hundred and thirty percent of the um, energy required to run the home, energy which means after 
you've used after you've run your home your house is now making money for you and exactly well in my in my eyes it, i would give it to the community i'm a socialist yeah well yeah right? well, well, <laughs> that's why it, it that's, that's how it'd work in this current <laughs> system saying, anyway yeah. it'd be a, it'd be a exactly yeah yeah what i'm saying is is that the most vulnerable in this country are the homeless i personally believe all right and and there's money there because they've got to say that they're looking after them all right and what i'm saying is it's okay all right well let's put them in temporary accommodation all right on brownfield sites or greenfield sites in in mm. units that doesn't need planning permission all right so i you don't need planning permission you just need the council to say yeah there's a bit of land there drop them on there okay great okay put them on there and then after two years because that's how long you can put them on uh, put these units on for then you go for planning permission by which time you've already established uh, a relationship between the community that you're you're in with these individuals and they are comfortable and got the support networks the doctors the nurses the psychologist god knows what whoever that drug rehabilitation what have you in that area rather than at the moment what they do is move them away out the area after they've been in supported mm. living you'll never get usually you know what i mean that 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 that, that dimension this is you start with a brownfield site mm -hmm. say all right you start with not only the solar energy that you're using but let's use the rainfall as well okay let's recycle the rainwater yeah. All right, so we cut yeah, out the yeah, water. The water, all right? We cut out the water bills. All right? I'm saying water bills. Others will say, yeah, the water, saving the water. And, and, the utility and, bills. The environment, and it's climate resilience as well. Like, I, I, I had exactly. an idea. Imagine, imagine <laughs> if in your eco home, you had like a massive 40,000 yeah. litre tank on inside the foundations of your house. Like, you don't need a yeah. way of filter. Con I, imagine... Well, imagine as a single person now i don't know about the the, the big person uh, uh family but imagine a single person uses a thousand gallons a year mm -hmm. yeah all right i'm just imagining this of oh, that not gallons you use say liters whatever right say it's a figure a thousand liters a year that's granted but do i really need a thousand liters a year if i'm using the same water twice three four five times i only need about 25 liters 30 mm. litres. I'm just recycling the same water. Mm. That's the mindset I'm thinking of. And I'm using, you know, the, the, uh, uh, what I'm thinking of as well is the, um, brown mm. water. Grey water, you mean? Yeah. You can, grey <laughs> yeah. water. Not brown water. Yeah, it's brown when you look at it. Grey, <laughs> <All right. laughs> grey water, yeah? No, grey water is, is the, is the, is the washing yeah. water, yeah? And then the black water, black water, is it? Or brown water, I can't remember what they call it. The, you, what you've, the yeah. toilet water, yeah? Recycle that, man. You know what I mean? I might not be able to drink it. I think I could, but I'm not going to say I can. But I could certainly possibly couldn't you just it. Couldn't you just evaporate? Right. Could it, wait. Uh, did you... I want to keep it because I, would, I don't want to use... I want to use... We produce, use the, the, produce, the, the produce too that's... much of it, though. Like, it's not... If you've just got a little bit yeah. of human waste, it's okay to deal with. But if you've got a city, you've got a constant oh, yeah, yeah. flow or river of shit. You know what I mean? Oh, like, of crap, you can't yeah. keep it. You know, he's got to go somewhere. Yeah, but don't forget. Yeah, but don't forget. Don't forget. If I had... Don't forget, right? I'm the homeless guy and I'm sitting... And I'm, I'm in the middle of a town, right? Who's got these council brick houses and God knows what that are grade, whatever, e, e or F, all right? And then suddenly they see me who was begging on the street and then now I'm walking around. I got a bit of back. I got, well, I'm doing all right. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. doing all right. Um, and I haven't got no energy bills. I've got no energy bills, utility bills whatsoever. All right. It's coming from the sky. I'm recycling it and it's coming from the sun and I'm, re and I'm using that. Yeah. Um, the council, I would hope that a council property owner, a uh, res tenant, would go well i want a bit of that all right and i'd say well yeah you could have done 20 years ago 22 years ago because the labor party promised us this i'm going to insulate britain mm -hmm. <laughs> all right the labor party promised to insulate all our houses but at that point they didn't mm -hmm. so you can't trust any political party on this island because they've already promised you it in the past 
But what I'm saying is, is that you can have more than just insulation. You can recycle the water coming out of the sky by rainwater harvesting. Yep. You could use the sun, all right, as well as we've already got them. They're already invented. We know these guys that, that, that do the eco homes. And I'm living in the eco home now. I'm not living in that little cabin unit. After two years, I've actually got a, they, they're lifting that unit up and building an eco friendly home. Brilliant. Well, look, um, simple. Can I ask about <laughs> your documentary? Uh, so, what's, what's, been, what's yeah, been going on in that? Wow, yeah. <sighs> Well, um, 2019, um, I was homeless myself in 2016, all right, the beginning of 2016. The documentary goes, uh, I talk about that in the documentary, and I'm a working class person, relationship break breakdown, and it goes from that period, it doesn't film that period, I just talk about it, from 2016 to when I was actually in the HMO, Housing Mods Bureau. Can I ask uh, one more question? Can you... Are you comfortable talking about it yeah. here, how you became homeless? Yeah, um, I had a, a relationship breakdown. Um, me and my partner weren't getting on. Uh, my son was living with me at the time because we were... You don't want to know. <laughs> I was married to her. We broke up. I got back mm -hmm. together. My son was there and... Um, I come back for my son and her because I got great respect for her mother, his mother, uh, but we just couldn't live together. Uh, and it took about, we tried it for the second time and it didn't work out. I could see where it was going. There was a chance that one of us would get hurt and it'd probably be me. Mm -hmm. All right. But I'm not saying it would be, I don't know, but it would more than likely from historical times. So I left, I left before it, before it would get, out of hand and that that's another issue because men i've come to find is are the biggest proportion of homeless people in on this in, in the uk and i think some of it is down to the fact that we're the man and we got to move out and you know we will sacrifice our home for our child and our and our, and well basically our yeah. children um all right and that's but that brings on a lot of issues that i come across within homelessness that are that are related to that mindset that we're men and we have no feelings we got to be the man we got to be the you know the breadwinner we got to i'm not saying we are the breadwinner but i mean we got to be the breadwinner we got it's instinctual, be, uh, in, uh, in my opinion sacrifice ourselves like to, to, to want, yeah to, oh god i think it's Sorry. a bit instinctual to want to be to want to be the breadwinner, to want to do those things. Although women do that too. Yes. All right. But I believe me. Um, oops. <laughs> my bit of I, I would, I would have, if I had the opportunity, I would rather have been a house husband. All right. I was that. I would have done. I would have wanted to brought up my, my yeah. child. All right. Or my, or my kids at the time, you know. I didn't have that opportunity and I, and I, and I went to work. All right. And I did. Um, uh, but that, but money which is what I'm trying to say is uh, that everyone's entitled to live in a safe and warm environment and live without fear. You, the most important thing on this in our country is our home, is our family, is our children. All right. And yeah. their well-being. because what we, what we sow is what we, what we, 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 we you know, what grows. And um, we may not intentionally grow what we, what we sow, because we got the mindset of I love her and I love him and God what have you and we're gonna have children we're gonna live happy ever after, but it's also society pressure that, that that puts that on it. I don't want to be cop out and say you know it wasn't all our fault. It was yeah, but I know I was, there was a time when we had we had the kids there and I, and I thought you know for, for a few more quid or what have you a bit more help mm -hmm. from the government, we might have had it a bit more easier. Not easier, but I mean a bit more supportive. And and the family is the most important, man. You know what I mean? Especially from the, from ch from, birth till, uh, teenager yeah. even. You know what I mean? That that, you've got to look after that generation. All right, and and, and pump them. This Starmer guy. Well, it's like that generation that are that, not cute. can I say <laughs> that generation are now relying on the adults mm. to fix the climate emergency. 
Like exactly, a, a ten-year-old, yeah. a ten-year-old doesn't have time to gr wait eight years to turn into an eighteen-year-old to become an adult to start acting on things. There's just not enough no. time left, and so it's it's down to the adults who are alive today yeah. in this moment, right now. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for the for the social aspect mm. of this, this, this country, I'm to blame. I'm a baby boomer. Yeah, I was born in the sixties. Yeah, I'm fifty six years old. I was born in the sixties. I had a council house at, at the age of eighteen, nineteen. I could have moved out of my house with my parents and got a flat within a, a couple of weeks. But, you know, just put on the list and that's it. All right, that scenario hasn't even existed in your generation or even those and i would say under 40 all right which i didn't realize until i become homeless and 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 i'm an adult yeah but i gotta be honest i never grew up as an adult well i had a lot of trauma and issues in my time but the fact when i thought well you know if you ain't going to do something steve no one else will was when mm. I was homeless, and I asked the homeless guy, I owned the homeless officer or the uh, counsellor, you know, what's going on? You're a similar age to me, and, 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 and I'm living in this dump. All right, what the hell's going on? I've been there for about uh, two months or wherever. Mm -hmm. Why haven't I got a flat? And he just shook his hands and put his hands up like that and said, I don't know, Steve, there is no answer. And that's when I looked at him, and, I, and like I just said, he was an old man. Which is what yeah. I am, yeah. In can, my can I pause you there for one sec? I, I really turn the that... light on. Sorry to cut you off like that. I needed the light. Um, you were saying you were saying about this right. counselor who was the same age as you, and you were talking to him about you. Yeah, he just went like he just went like that. You know, I, I've got no answers, and I thought, well, if you can't help me, you can. And I realised I was a similar age mm -hmm. to him, so I wasn't that happy go luck not happy, go but I mean, go lucky chancer that would you know got away with you know, having children and, and family and working and God knows what and good bits and bad bits. I had to be, a, I was that guy in my head that I always looked up to, which was an adult. All right. I was, I was polite to, I had to grow up mm -hmm. quick. Um, but what I was going to say was it also, which is change the subject again and, and about the being a privilege, privileged as in a baby boomer. That's all right. Because I've been in work, out of work, had a home, not a home, what have you. Married, divorce, and all that. But when I first went on to Insulate Britain, and I met individuals of your—I don't know how old you are, Josh. I don't need you to tell me. But I mean, there was young, younger, lot younger than me. My—I could be your father, yeah. or old enough to be your parent. Yeah, all right. And they were telling me that they were living in fuel poverty. All right, their mothers and their fathers, or whatever, they were leaving that home to go on the road for insulate britain and their goal was still the environment yeah. all right and 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 to do that leap of okay this is what we've got at the moment i'm living it today but i want to seek out tomorrow and sort that issue out as well that's off to you guys. That's men and women, because you know that there was men and yeah. women uh, 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 that were un at least. It was an equal 40. spread, to be honest, all of right. all ages and. Yeah, 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 and and it touched it touched me. You know what I mean? And that's why. Um, when JSO started, that wasn't my beef. My beef was the fuel poverty, but I hope that helped with the. Uh, I'd done some advocate. I, I I promoted some of this before it started. I knew because I can't talk about the environment. I, I understand it more now since I've been with you guys. We have, I had more better conversations with you guys, right? After the block, yeah. All right. After we got out of, got released, and we'd have oh thank God, you know what? We talk, and we'd have a fantastic conversation around the table. Yeah. About obviously what had happened, but also what we wanted to do to improve the world oh. and, and, our, and our country. Did I? I... I mean, much better than what I'm getting here in my tank. I, just, I was going to add to that, right? So I remember it was like yeah. midway through into late Britain and we was getting, I was, was getting up in yeah. the morning and everyone was having breakfast around the table downstairs and I come downstairs, make myself a bowl of cereal, I sit down and people were talking about how to change the world over the, over the dinner table. And yeah. I just sat there observing this conversation and then just read the set out like, you know what, guys, the quality of conversation here is just, you know, top notch. Absolutely brilliant.
I'm telling the missing the missing link that I had, right? This is the truth now, Josh Josh. I always knew that for homelessness, the accommodation was the easy part, mm. right? And the supporting network was the hard, right? But I was so far wrong. I, I was right about that bit, but what I'd missed about the home was the environment. I, I touched on solar panels on my mm -hmm. idea, yeah? But the fact that you could have you could give something back as in you could produce too much energy and give it to the community and get rid of the stigma of being a homeless person and a homeless accommodation because you were actually giving something back to the community. And that was the missing piece of all homelessness issues in this country because the stigma, it doesn't matter what you, what you wrap it up in. All right. People always say, Oh, that's a bloody homeless place. You know, that's where they take all the people and all like that. But they can't say that hand on heart if they're putting something back in without even having to because some of these guys that I, I advocate for may never work in their lifetime, all right? Because of issues. I won't say what, but they, they're issues. But the mindset that we were talking about before where the man has got to man up and, yeah, we've got to go to work, these men and women may never work. But So what do you do, all right? What do you do with them? Well, you produce a home that gives something to the community and they can get on with their lives and they are uh, a benefit to mm -hmm. the community because no matter what you do, not saying hello to somebody in the morning before they got their horrible nine to five job, you know what I mean? And they see this smiley face handing out whatever, um, uh, the, the, the big issue or what have you, you know what I mean? Whatever they want to do, they are they are a benefit to their community. They're human beings. Safe. All right. They got vast. Mo I, yeah, I love what you're. I, I love what you're saying, <laughs> but I've got some. I, I want to tell you something, uh, Keith. You know, you said you're a socialist, right? Now, yeah. there's been a concerted effort for for decades to make that to make that into a dirty word, to uh, basically. You know, yeah, because they're scared. Well, of yeah, it. I mean, it's not very profitable <laughs> be having a running a socialist country. It's very expensive. Don't yeah. I know it? Expensive, expensive. Is that their? Is that their cop? Well, out? that's probably that probably is expensive. their cop out. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's like why they're not doing it. Yeah. Oh, all right. So so all right then. I'll I'll make all right. I'll I'll, I'll become a but, uh, a manufacturer of PPE, or I'll start a war, an illegal war in some other country. All right. That's why my, my that's why they don't like me. I want to tell. <laughs> it's not because I'm a socialist. I, I want to tell you about a book I read in prison uh, about socialism. So I was um, I yeah. joined Extinction Rebellion as somebody who believed yeah. in a version of capitalism that was more restricted and controlled than it is now. But um, mm. after reading a book called uh, Making a Case of Socialism in Pentonville Prison, um, wow. it, it yeah. opened my eyes to the fact that when, when you hear that, when I, I used to think of the word communist, I used to think of Russia, right? The USSR. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I, re I was reading about the USSR and it turns out that is not communism. It's, and it's not socialism. No. That is, that is just something that has hijacked the fucking name and taken over and become state capitalism. <laughs> um, now, I, I don't know if tr a true socialist society is possible. Maybe it is a dream, maybe it's not. But the USSR was not it. And China was not yeah, it. Yeah, agree, agree. And um, yeah. I'd say Cambodia was definitely not it. <laughs> But all the all these countries <laughs> right. used um, used the name of communism. Dictate under the name. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. I agree. What I'm saying to you is is that if the the option we got here is to produce more energy than we can we can actually we need, mm -hmm. and I'm saying rather than selling it to somebody who can't <laughs> afford it in our current system, then give it to them. If someone's in fuel poverty before we've actually cracked it, the people will realise, hang on a sec, if we make enough of this energy, we can actually power other stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Schools, libraries. Exactly, yeah. All right? That's what I'm trying to say. Um, there is no... I, I, my socialism is help each other, yeah? All right? And be in control of your own destiny. Because if I get up in the morning and I know I haven't got no fuel bills, I know I've got no utility bills and my rent is affordable, all right? 
or relied upon, I can mm-hmm. it's, 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 I can I can afford to pay for it. If someone comes up to me and say, "You're not getting a pay rise tomorrow," you're not getting a pay rise this year. I go, well, fuck you. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay at home. All right. My house is secure. Yeah. I got food on the table because I'm already growing my own vegetables. Yeah. That's control. That's self control. No, we don't have not it. Control. We don't have government. it. If you, we won't get it with anybody here, Josh. That's what I'm saying. With all the Parliament, Green, Labour. Conservative, liberal, Democrats, whatever you want to call it, they will not. Give can, you imagine, can you imagine if we set up <laughs> our communities so that we were growing all of our own mm-hmm. food, all of our own food, and we were yes. producing all of our own energy, and we did decentralise the control of the country, and what they did in what what they did in in the original mm. Russian Revolution before it got hijacked by crazy people um, <laughs> was they had Soviets, yeah. and the Soviets was like a council for your town. And you would elect somebody, like someone would, somebody would, would be elected in by, by the people in the town to basically run the town. That person would get no special privileges, no extra money, and they would be paid the same working class wage as everybody else, but they'd be ex- expected to, to do yeah, a job. Exactly. Uh, to do the job. Pro- a bit like, what's his name? And once they were out, they never came back. I... And once Sorry? they were out of office, they could never come back. They never come back, yeah. Absolutely, Dennis Skinner. What he done with his money when he when he was an MP and he gave some of the most of his money to the miners. He had enough for a living wage, and during the miners' strike, he gave half of his money, his wage, if not all of it. I can't remember now. It's been done. Uh, what has really cheesed me off in fifty six, fifty yeah, fifty six years, and and the last five or six years that I've been advocating for for individuals mm-hmm. that are homeless, is that I'm not reinventing the wheel. The wheel has already been there, whether it be the parole officer saying, why why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that? To the DWP saying, why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that? To the social worker saying, why isn't this happening and why isn't that happening? They all say, Steve, it did, and it's just been taken away from yeah. us. You're just mentioning now about the Soviet Union and, and that. I'm not bleating anything that hasn't ever happened before in the past. It's just been not allowed to be done here. All right, let's take a bit of that, a bit of this and a bit of that and make this country a better place and save the planet in the same time. I think we need to do it all at once. By making... Yes, it has to. We haven't got a... But I want a party that I can put a ticket on or cross a box to say, yeah, you're going to do it regardless of what. All right, that's what we need now for 2024 is a party that says, yeah, you know what? We're not only going to insulate all the houses in this country... But all those that are absolutely beyond repair, we will knock down and we'll start again with eco-friendly Can I just add, we, and provide. We some, can't make that happen right now yeah. because the way the voting system works, it's 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 more advent, advantageous for it. To, there can only be two parties, right? It's a two-party system, and the reason is you've got a left and a right, conservative and Labour, right? Say if you're a left-leaning person, uh, let's say let's say a third party pops up, right? Let's say the Green Party, for example. You are really far left and you think like Labour doesn't go far left enough. So if you, if you decide to take your vote and put it on the Green Party, you're taking it away from the Labour Party and thus increasing the chances that the Conservative Party will win. So any deviation right. from the two-party system, uh, from the two-party voting that you can choose, will benefit the, the, the opposite of what you want to happen. So people... Either vote one or the other, I'll, and it's not a fair system. I'll, I'll give you another scenario establishment, establishment, or establishment. Which one are you going to choose for? All right, Hello. we need a fourth one and establishment, and then we'll see who turns up. We want somebody absolutely. Bold. I think, I think the whole parliamentary <laughs> system is broken. It's rigged yeah. beyond belief. And the banking systems are rigged as well, by the way. Just drop, drop that in there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My manifesto would be, I live in an 18th century house. This will give you a clue, right? I live in an 18th century house. It's not a house. It was a workplace for the GWR railway in mm. Gloucester. Yeah. So it was offices 200 years ago. Suddenly, 200 years later, people are living in these accommodation that wasn't fit for accommodation 200 years ago because it was working places. 
that's where we are. I would not, it looks lovely outside. I say, yeah, it looks lovely. If you want to keep it here pristine but not live in it, fair enough. Because I'm freezing in the winter and I'm boiling hot in the summer because there's no air con or God knows what. It's just no insulation or nothing. Yeah. I would knock it down. I would knock it down for your generation. I live on a floodplain. So this should, this should give you a clue where I'm going with this. I live on a floodplain. I knock this 18th or 17th century house down and build on top of it a 21st century invite uh, a living home accommodation mm. similarly what i do in london knock down parliament is <laughs> a floodplain and start all over again for the 20th i'd keep the building yeah <laughs> oh what for <laughs> <laughs> what for? i yeah uh, i guess you got <laughs> oh there's nice I'd, i could put do not, I could do put not do right a I'd, thousand eco no, what i'd do is I'd, I'd turn <laughs> i'd turn the parliament building into a museum of british socialist history or some shit like that something okay, about right. history something about you know something about how we <laughs> right. yeah. i'll let you off <laughs> this is what it was before you don't want any of this this is what it was before before 2024 or wherever uh i would knock it all down all right, this is what we went on the road yeah. for, man. We want to protect our island, protect our homes, knock the old crap down. It's all imperialist, all right? It's all built true. on slavery. True, that's very true, right? yeah. Get rid of the it. The British Empire right? was horrendous. Build the, the... Build, build the evil that we've done to, for the last 200 years and put some new stuff on and put some... Some of this worth help, you know, which, which is worth... You know... I, I I I do agree with you ideo ideologically, but I am a fan of I I am a fan of beautiful architecture, and when it comes to like when it comes when it, oh god take no, a when it, when of it, it. comes to, honestly, no, seriously though when it comes to 18th century buildings like the nice the good ones you know the the fancy stonework, yeah. our tradesmen today because I'm a tradesman, couldn't come close like yeah. there's uh, there's a 19th century like no. uh, Manchester City Council building is like an 18 I think it's 18th or 19th century building and there's mosaic tiles and carved yeah. stone statues holding up the walls and shit and I know it's probably built in slavery but I don't, but, okay, we'll, we'll, but, but <laughs> we'll put it in a bloody eco-friendly building and knock the rest down <laughs> well I think I think they are actually renovated well I think old buildings with history need to be <laughs> saved but old houses like the ones you were describing can go as long as we keep the old... How many Roman villas do you see today? Well, none, obviously. They've all been... They've all... Exactly. Been destroyed by What's time. What's the bloody point? <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Uh, we see, I think, <laughs> no, I think we could... I think we could take the people... We could take out <laughs> the establishment and destroy a load of old houses yeah. while still having, like, beautiful ancient architecture of history. But, like, oh, this is the history behind this okay. building. The people who built it are gone, <laughs> just to clarify. Like, you know. Yeah. And this, this yeah. is just... Anyway. <laughs> I think I've gone too far, yeah? I've got to be honest, I'm going to get banned from you everywhere. Can't, you can't go too far. Listen, Re revolution. listen, you can't go too far on this podcast. This is called Activism Uncensored. It means, as long as you're not... Oh, that, oh, as long as you're true. not spouting, yeah. like, hate or anything daft or anything no. you know then you can say whatever the hell you want i, I just would warn you not to incriminate okay. yourself in, incriminate yourself because that <laughs> is highly right. likely if you do talk about actions right. i really i've really enjoyed this i tell you josh because i can say what i want is uh, yeah being a fellow yeah. activist, i can say what yeah you know what i mean i can say what i, I want to say but um yeah it's the world's a, 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 a weird place but it, it's not when you work out who's playing the fiddle, then you work out then what you're up against. And we need to do something about the environment as much as we need to do something about this political, as probably the, uh, a political, it's a political reason why there's homeless people. Mm. There shouldn't be no homeless yeah. people. And that's what's so frustrating. From meeting two guys, and I promise you this, I met two guys that were in my town sleeping rough and I said, why aren't you, go why aren't you in the support of living? Why aren't you in accommodation? And they said, Steve, I would rather be on this. I would rather, I feel safer on the street than what I do in, in support really? of living. Why is that? Yeah, that was in 2017. Why? Watch the documentary. Okay, tell us, <laughs> okay, tell us where can people find your documentary? Um, oh, it's, it's Black Dog Way documentary. That's what it is. At, it's a website 
don't ask me but it's a website i can't do it but we got a lovely website it's black black at black dog way documentary um it's on is it on youtube um what else has he got it's on instagram yeah i, th- I don't know if it's on youtube it's on instagram it's on google if you google it um it's not the documentary yet because we're still funding to get it done but i believe we'll be getting it out there's a trailer on it and we we'll get so what's it happened in the year. documentary then what kind um, of film things you've been filming sorry yeah it starts from 2019 he said that he was going to film me for eight months which he did and then we had covid so uh during covid we couldn't film but i was still advocating um then i sent him back in 21 and I, I i tell him what has happened during covid which ain't what boris johnson said uh and then in obviously 21 then i do insulate britain mm-hmm. so i we lose another year for that and then um he comes back to me in 22 and then i've got the idea for a project I hope to cure this mess all right thanks to insulate britain which was the missing link for giving something back to the community and losing the stigma of being a homeless institute. Oh, I'll show you a pic. Yep. Yeah. Yes. I remember that photo. That's what I think. Did yeah. you see that? Brilliant. I'll hold up to my camera as well. Yeah. Yeah. The amazing beautiful. people. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I, I'm glad I had that on there. God's chosen. <laughs> so I and it's mentioned in my in my in my doc. Yeah, Insulate Britain is part of part of me. And and this was our block group. No pass around. <laughs> and uh, long may it last. We're still fighting, all of us. Whether we realise it I'm still fighting. I'm um, talking the talk and So I, do, you, yeah. do I have a little update on my, uh, on my, bit, on my situation with TAG? So yeah, basically, uh, because I skipped court so many times, I decided to not to go to court. So I got quite a lot for Internet Britain. I didn't open my post as well. So, um, But now, basically, um, yeah. uh, I'm, on, I'm on TAG for the, at least a year. So, I, so I've got a... This is my ankle tag. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and um, I, so I can't... So they've given me three counties. Greater Manchester, Lancashire, and uh, South Yorkshire. And I can't go outside wow. of those counties. I also can't participate in any form of protest. So for the next year, I'm going to be tagged, stuck in Manchester, unable to go to London and protest, which is what I would really, really like to do, very much so. Uh, so because I can't do actions, I, I have to use their repression to my advantage. And I'm going to create, the, I'm going to, this yeah. podcast is going to, be, and this, this podcast and the things I'm working on are, are those outlets. Now, we're still really small at the minute, but... Um, you know, I, I do believe that this well, is such a powerful cause that we're fighting for that this podcast will blow yeah. up because there's no other podcast like this. You know, we're, we're it's a podcast created by an yeah. act, activists talking to other activists, talking to more than activists, talking to loads of different people. I've got someone coming on from Sweden, Good. by the way, on Sunday. Yeah, wow. I've had people Brilliant. from blockade Australia on yeah. as, uh, as well. Um, and I quite a lot of JSO yeah. people. Wow. And IB people. I'm telling you what, yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> you know this, all right? We're we're told, right? Myself included and many of us, hundred and twenty of us on Insulate Britain, not to go on any road again. <laughs> yeah. But if it's at, if it I mean I don't mean any on the road, I mean block a road, yeah? We know how to block a road. <laughs> and when the time is right, or if the time is right We'll be there, but I don't want to. That's that's not dead. That, we won't be there. We will. We, we think we're there, right? There, there is. Go yeah, on. that's all. I yeah. Cut that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. I tell you something that a couple of when wanted, we'll be there. Uh, Sorry, what a couple on. of newbies said to me the other, uh, the other night at the social is a is mm. a Manchester just a pearl social every first Thursday of every month in the sandbar if anyone would like to attend. Sick. Uh, six o'clock um, Brilliant. and there was a couple, a couple of girls in there and they said we would do actions but we just wish we didn't have to go all the way down to London to do them why can't we do any local actions and I'm thinking we could mm. why don't we just target all the international infrastructure in the UK 
why why don't the people in the north target the oil infrastructure and the and the motorways and the ports and the airports in the north and people in the south do the south and the people in Scotland do Scotland. I know a lot of the people uh, are yeah. people in the climate movement in, in the UK who are from Scotland, they don't like the fact they've got to come all the way down to London to protest. Like yeah. they, they want to do it in Scotland, which is probably the reason why the new organisation, uh, This Is Rigged, has started. Have you heard about them? This is rigged. No, that's a cracking title. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> this is rigged. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, they're going. Uh, they're shutting down oil terminals, <laughs> demanding action on climate change. Yeah, it sounds like it. Wow. Okay. That's a cracking title and a cracking. Yeah, it says it says what it says on the like just stop oil just as what it says on the tin. Mm. Just rigged. <laughs> I think I think so we need a. Re- imagine if we got a load of health professionals and started to come, because Insulate Britain was like 140 people in total, right? Imagine if we got 140 yeah. health yeah. professionals, not doctors, nurses and whoever, and a couple of extra people yeah, to join as well, yeah. who were um, who could do what Insulate Britain did, cause as much mayhem as, as Insulate Britain <laughs> yeah. did, but have banners saying, from the NHS. Save the NHS, yeah, yeah. With absolutely. a demand to massively, absolutely. massively increase the funding, like several fold, and re nationalize the NHS. Like, that yeah, nobody, I could mention nobody it. could get mad about that. Like, no, <laughs> no member of the public could be like, oh, those, what, oh, wait, hang on a second, I, I like that idea. Do you know what I mean? Insulate yeah. Britain's a bit vague, just yeah. a pile, you, people can argue, but we need oil, but save the NHS. Nobody yeah. has got a, a a, th- a thing they could say to that not yeah. a single thing and it's the most reasonable demand and i think it could be so, such a wide like, be, like because it's such a general thing that everyone believes in i think recruitment would be a lot easier mm. than it would be for recruiting people for just a pile or in like britain or extinction rebellion because it's not even it's not even talking about the climate it's talking literally about the nhs which everyone knows yeah. is failing I think, yeah, yeah, I think we should, yeah, there's a, I agree with that, the, the, the general public, the, the, we have to, we have to ask, well, I don't have to ask, but I, I just feel that it's got to be publicly owned, so we get out, I don't know if you realise it, but there, there's a lot of middlemen in the mm, NHS, yeah. there's a lot more bureaucracy, and get rid of that crap i.e. Tony Blair and what he'd done with PFIs and what have you. So it's a bit more, but on a general term... Can you explain yeah. what you mean? Because, yeah, um, there's a there's a guy, you want to have a look at him, Dr. Bob Gill, all right? Um, I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he's found that since, two, since my days in the 2000s, mm-hmm. yeah, all right, in the 90s when Blair was about, he's taken a lot of money, they're taking a lot of money, you know, Big Pharma and what have you, there's a lot of where you had middle where you didn't have middle management. That's the easiest way of saying it. They've swarmed it now with bureaucracy and, and, and middle mm-hmm. management. So the actual money that's going in filters down through this lot. So they're taking their cut before it gets down to the nurse and the doctor yeah. and, the, and the consultant on the turn. That's the easiest way of saying it. The politest way of saying it. And we need to get rid of them. It's already been started from America. Yeah, really? Because they've got it so much worse than we have. Honest, it, it is. We haven't got an NHS. I personally believe that we haven't got an NHS anymore. All right? It's already going out. The money has already been sifted through. The big money has been sifted through and being collected by the Americans. It's something you have to look into. A lot of people need to look into. It's, but if Dr. Bob Gill is the guy that knows it. He's been challenging this for years, for the last five, ten years. And, it, and, it, and he's brought it to the head. He is willing to talk to any health minister, Jeremy Hunt, whatever it was, he offered him out, didn't want to know. Anyone who's in the, I don't even know who's the health minister now, but he will talk like he will talk them down because he knows where the, they're all funded. Simon, whatever his name is, that I can't, I, it's not my baby, homelessness is my baby, but I know a little bit about the NHS and just look into that, I warn everyone. Yeah, it's been sold. I, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not advocating for American bloody sub, you know what I mean, a subsidy place. I'll advocate and I'll die for the NHS like everyone else would, but just beware that it's not what you think it is. I want to add to this. 
Um, the guys on the shop floor. I want to add to this, right? So during Insulate Britain, yeah. actually, one of my arresting officers, uh, you know, was in like a holding area with yeah. arrested. I was having a good conversation and we talked about the NHS and his, his opinion, yeah. which makes perfect sense to me, is that the, the Tories don't want there to be a national NHS. So what they, what they will do is they will slash the funding, slash the funding, slash the funding until the performance of the NHS becomes so poor that when it comes time for them to make an offer, hey guys, why don't we privatise the NHS so then it'll work better. Yeah. And then they get to sell off. That's the easiest way of saying it. But they have it, yeah. to ruin the NHS first until people will accept that. And it's a process of... Yeah. They run it into the ground. Yeah, they, they, they are, it's almost there. It's, they it, run it into it's the It's almost ground. in the ground. They've been running it into the ground for yeah. 10 years or more. I, I, anyone on here, I beg them to listen to Dr. Bob Gill. Uh, he explains it to a T. The money that's been siphoned out since Blair, Tony Blair. So it's way before um, who we had then, Boris and Cameron and all that. The PFI system come in then. And then after that, the Tories took over. That's what I'm saying. You got, you got establishment, establishment, or establishment on the on the voting ticket. Mm. Unless we get another party, and we I mean tried the like. Party. Um, I do believe that Jeremy Corbyn was genuinely yes. anti-establishment yes. and pro-socialist, <laughs> and they destroyed him. Like the they, 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 made, exactly, <laughs> they absolutely ruined him. Like they see <laughs> the newspapers because. <laughs> The, P the establishment could could why. not allow Jeremy Corbyn to come into power. Yeah. So the, the people no. who the newspapers are privately owned businesses. They're not a public service. Yeah. They have they have you know yeah. narratives and owners owners with financial interests. Um, he could not be bought. He couldn't be bought. No, and that's why he could never no. be allowed to become prime minister. That's a dangerous man. Exactly. A dangerous man who can't yeah. be bought. Right. <laughs> There's two here. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's become pretty clear. You know, I would never, I would right. never want to be uh, like get into like. Do you know, know if we had the revolution, like if we had a revolution and we brought changed the government, and I had an opportunity to go into some form of leadership, I'd be like, no, thank you. I'm getting on my boat and I'm. <laughs> I'm doing traveling the world now in a bit and just have a quiet life. Yeah. For me, I, I want this unit to be built, right? Personally, right? I want this unit to be built for the homeless mm. and let the community show them the template, how to do it, as in... I you like go, your idea. You got new build, then you got, you know what I mean? And then I'll walk away. I want to fucking retire, man. <laughs> I want to go. I, I, I've spent my retirement, my pension, on, on what I've done in the last two years. That's my pension gone, what I had. Yeah, private pension, yeah. yeah? So that's it, all right? Come the end of this year, I haven't got no money anyway, but at the end of this year. But what I want to establish is a foundation that will hopefully live on for your guys, your generation, and on. And you can do with it what you want. I don't want any ownership of it because unless it's run by the community and backed by the community, nothing will work, all right? Nothing. So you've got to bring the community in and and to get to that mindset, yeah, this is beneficial for me, my children, my grandmother, my mother. All right, it's beneficial for everyone. And you can call it what you want. I call it socialism. But <laughs> it's not what we got mm -hmm. now. They're in control. I want control for myself. I want control for you. You want control for yourself. I want everyone to have a control. If I want to get up in the morning and go to work for... Two pound an hour, all right. Then oh, it won't be two pound an hour. I don't know the minimum wage, and I'm gonna. And then after after a year, they're only offering me one percent when inflation is eight or ten percent. I want to say fuck you. I ain't going to work. All right. That is control. Yeah. That's what this country needs, and that's what should be yeah. on the table. And that's why mine and other people's ideas of what this country should be like will be shut down. And that's why Corbyn was shut down. I, I believe Corbyn was shut down because of that. All right? Because he could see all the... All it the is a system of control, money. really, isn't it? Like, your bills, your rent, yeah. council tax. You know, I don't like council tax. What's that? Well, <laughs> it's a new tax he invented, or, 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 like, a couple of decades ago that I told yeah. us wouldn't last forever. Um, 
You know, I, I saw an interesting what slogan, then? you know. You might, you might agree with this. It says, um, war, war is murder. Taxation is theft. The police are gangs. Would you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. They're just advocating for the, for the two of it. Yeah. They don't even realise it. The one, I've got to be honest, the, the, the police that arrested us, I don't know if you felt that, but they were glad when it was us and not the anti-vaxxers because we were more friend. We were just, yeah, we just want to get arrested. All right. And they were glad that they had their overtime and their double time or triple time or yeah. whatever it was to come and collect us off the road. And not they were at Parliament or God knows where with the anti-vaxxers or, or with whoever. Mm. So, but, yeah. I, I remember a time, thinking about it, that uh, the only hassle I had at one point was when we I was with, it was no pass around, so it was before the injunction ones. And there was a copper there, a youngish copper, and he said, oh, you're going to glue yourself and all this, and being really detrimental to us being on the on the, on the the road. And he was, re you know, really loud about it as well. And by the time, from that attitude that he had, to when he actually put me in the cell, he shook my hand and said, oh, I understand mm -hmm. what you're doing now. And I, I suspect you had a similar Yeah, sort of, I have. It, yeah, well, I have. Well. So I had a situation yeah. where... Me and this isn't just a pile. Me and a friend. Uh, uh, it's, oh, it's such a long and awesome story, but basically, we almost got arrested. We escaped in my car. We went on the run from the police for like twelve hours. We broke into an oil silo with just two people because we thought, hey, fuck it, you know, if we're going to be arrested, wow. we might as well do it in style. We broke into the oil silo, got on the <laughs> run, run from guards and dogs, and climbed onto the roof of the oil silo with helicopters above with fucking spotlights on us. By the time the event lasted, <laughs> doesn't start really did have the full story is available on my YouTube channel actually. I've actually gone all over that. But yeah. uh, when I actually got arrested, they eventually got us down and they arrested us. Um, I had a full conversation about my motivations with the officer. Uh, you know, he was taking me back to the police station, and there was two officers. One of them was not very, you know, he, he was he was really adamantly against what we did and thought we was being stupid. But the second mm. officer was more debating me. But at the end of it, they shook my hand. Do you know what I mean? Because like they respect, like wow, they respect yeah. that you're standing by your principles. Do you know what I mean? Because that really is standing by your principles. Do you know what I mean? You're willing to go to those lengths. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, yeah, you can't. I loved it. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I think it was. They had heard all the crap on the media. All right. They've been told by their inspectors or their sergeant or whatever it is that's high end. The commissioner, you got to get these lads, you know what I mean, or people, you got to lock, you know, they're wherever, they're trouble, they're terrorists. A load of bollocks, you know what I mean? It, once you get one-to-one -one and talk to them, you know exactly what you're doing and the reasons why, then if you're a family, if you're a human being, it's just a sensible, common-sense human being, um, and a parent or a, or, yeah, or a parent, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's taught one to one and you and you, you you say hang on no this isn't right it's getting through that barrier of the media and the and the and the bullshit that is, is is said elsewhere on social media and God knows what I've had my sister all right a close sister to me well I've obviously close sister um, she wouldn't hardly speak to me for about wow. half a year half a year after the Insulate Britain it took her about a year to work out why I done it with regards to fuel poverty and, and the environment. Um, I can't remember what turned her. There was one, I put one caption on Facebook and she liked it. And I thought, oh my good God, you know, what <laughs> I said. I can't remember what it was to this day. But ever, the penny sort of dropped. This media bullshit, this six o'clock news, this 10 o'clock news, panorama, not panorama, but well, might be panorama. Um, you know, it's just crap. The daytime TV, oh, they're bad. LB, you know, wherever it is, radio station, BBC, or wherever it is, we're all bad. No, we're not. We're fucking caring people that are worried for our future. I know. You know, it's more than that. As well. yeah, yeah, I mean, I said this on the last podcast, but I feel sorry for the youngest people in this in the climate movement because I know people who are like eighteen, nineteen, who should be planning to go to university who are now having to not do that and then put their life on hold. That's supposed to be the fun time of your life. Do you know when to you do. turn 18 and you're 19, you yeah. go to university, maybe it wasn't the same when you were at my age, but that's pretty much been what everyone 
my generation's done, you know, have a while of a time in university, get set up for your career, start like pursuing your career. And, a lot. But, but and, well, after, yeah, but like, even, there's a lot of young people in client movements who, are, who have now taken it upon themselves to try and change, the, try and bring change, and they feel a bit salty about the fact they've had to give up what they've already, what they wanted to do. And another thing I wanted to say to you as well, uh, bringing back to a point you said before about get people to have the penny drop, is in my experience, people who have had the penny like penny drop and they realise like how corrupt everything is and how how wrong everything is and every all the rest of it. Once they accept all of that, the most common response that I, I, I get after that, oh well, there's nothing you can do about it. And I think that comes comes back to yeah. the point of like we're conditioned to feel powerless, like. The people in charge mm. don't want the population to realise that they actually have power, because it, that's a big problem mm. if, they, if people start realising mm. that. We proved yeah. that all right from day one. We did all right. We'd done that from day one, man. We were no one all right until September the thirteenth, was it, two thousand and one. All right, when we done insulate bread, we were nobody, just a threat or a, or a, or a, or a insult. We, we wrote them a letter. And then bang, we were on the news. We, we, we sent them a yeah, that's we, right. We yeah. sent them a that's letter right. saying yeah. like, um, "You will insulate all British homes, yeah. or else we will that's start right, a campaign yeah. of civil resistance." Yeah, I bet they saw that letter and they laughed at us. They didn't. I bet they were laughing, yeah. weren't they? No. Did you even read it? Yeah, I bet. I, I, yeah, I, we was. I sent it off. It was no. me and and and. and um, Tracy that put That's it through the parliament, uh, put it through the, uh, yeah, and and then they weren't laughing then, whatever it was a month later, <laughs> because we were sat on the road. Yeah, you know we... what I mean. <laughs> 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 but and, and where's that basket now? You know what I mean? They they got you with a tag. Where's Boris Johnson? Why haven't they got him a tag? Why haven't they locked him up? All right. It, the first thing is right to crush Parliament. The second thing is to lock everyone up who's been on the front bench or a Prime Minister since Tony Blair, <laughs> Tony Blair included. Lock them all up, and then we'll start again. All right. So yeah, that's my manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and we'll save. <laughs> we'll save. Um, all right. I, I don't know, right. So my manifesto pledge is that. Every yeah. single new house that is being built in the UK now, the insulation, minimum insulation requirements are going to get tripled or quadrupled. Every house has to be built with solar power. Every house has to have ground source heat pumps. Yeah. Um, going to cap... I, I'm not good at economics, but I want to like... I'd like to make it uh, illegal for a, a, a person to own more than one house. Or... or, or organizations oh, and companies <laughs> like a private corporation which should not be allowed to own residential property as, a, as an investment like I'm voting the for people you, Josh. the people should not be a source of revenue for the for the super rich um which they currently are and obviously so i also advocate that every new house has to be built with a rainwater harvesting uh, capabilities because <laughs> uh, I'm not finished I've got quite a bit more to go because um, it has, it has <laughs> added, added benefits like so when we when we have a drought for example we've all got a water supply when we've got a flood there's a lot more water that's not being washed down the valley and is actually being stored underneath people's houses we could actually we could we could we could uh, have it computerized and control how much we take in and how much we don't uh, you know um, and yeah, so the you know because after obviously have the water recycles, so it doesn't go stale. So there'd be a pump cy cycling it around continuously. That's yeah, that's what um, we're doing, yeah. So yeah, building resilience. In, Don't forget the wind. Don't forget there's the so wind. many things. The windmills. Well, <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, and the hydrogen. Not hydrogen. Hy hy uh, hydro. The, the water hydro power. One. Ocean. I've hydro, talked about this quite it, yeah. on the podcast. O ocean hydropower, the rise and the falling of the ocean. You know, we could power every coastal town on Earth with ocean hydropower. Yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't even have to be near. It doesn't even have to be near the land. We could build like dams out at sea, because the tide rises and falls all over the planet. You know, wow, yeah, okay. it's like a bulge of what? It's like two that. bulges of water that race around the planet following the moon. 
Um, or we're just behind us yes. in the energy. Um, there's, there's so many things we could do. And I guess if I start going into them all now, I'm just going to be repeating myself because I have I have mentioned them many times. But, 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 but that would create loads of jobs yeah. and we'd be too busy starting any wars. So... But it was thumbs up for everyone, all right? Because we'd be too busy building our infrastructure for the future rather than building the last thing, up. The last thing I want to say to everybody, right? Well, I don't know about mm. you. We've, we've gone over well over an hour now, so we, we can continue as long as you like. Um, but one thing I want to say to everybody yeah. listening is you need to realise that we actually can't change things. Like, you can change things. You can be a major influence Absolutely. don't underestimate how how far your influence can go because influence is a funny thing say if you just do say if you just do one action for example um you know everybody who sees the action mm. will get have an opinion on it and uh, some of them won't like yeah. you but some of them will and the ones that will might will think mm. about you and it'll, over time it'll, it's like a seed growing in their mind and then everything that they do that springs out of that seed is added on to the influence you had from the original action. It doesn't matter. We, we've been going for well over an hour. Uh, I've let it continue because it's been interesting. <laughs> and we can, we can round up the last bit of the episode as an audio only. We've got over an hour's footage of you talking. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was into that last bit. It really made sense. Um, but I wanted to say it, but then the bloody camera... Well, I was going about my, I was going about um, my, my manifesto of all the things I would have... Uh, all the yeah ab absolutely I, I think that um, yeah I think I've already mentioned what I, I personally do I, I, I think the main thing is that the main goal would be control as in our control we'd have mm -hmm. control rather than them and I, and I think that would that would that would bring the, the mind rather than worrying about living for tomorrow or living for today thinking about tomorrow and, and improving the world even better mm -hmm. i've had i'm 56 years old all i was concentrated on was paying the rent getting food on the table and making sure that my my, my family were all right you know what i mean and, and friends and family um you take that mindset away due to the fact that you've definitely got a home mm -hmm. all right it's eco-friendly all right so it's not damaging the planet um you're producing local produce all right, whichever it may be, and I might be able to grow something here in Gloucester where you can't grow in Manchester. So we just swap, yeah. That, yeah. I'm not talking. More like, it's quite. Yeah, it's, you know it's, I do say? understand what you're trying to say. It's um, quite a simple solution. Simple solution, yeah. really. You know, if uh, if everybody imagine if everybody was yeah. imagine if every single garden was a vegetable plot, and every single park yeah. was a vegetable plot, and every single like. Mm. When we was in World War Two, for example, we everybody was growing their own vegetables. Exactly. Because we was at war and we exactly. needed we needed to feed the country. You know, what? Why do we have yeah. to go to a shop, and ex and pay contactless over over on a cap on a piece of plastic to get a vegetable that's wrapped in plastic? When we when we yeah. as communities could be growing these things for free. Because, yeah. Because I'm tell the other thing that's worrying me, what I've heard is the plastic. Everything's right, dropped in plastic. When, when it's disgusting. The plastic says, yeah, but I mean the plastic. Sorry, the plastic card, the the credit card, or whatever it is, card. Yeah. The credit card, rather than using cash. All right, that's that. That's control. What's what's stopping me? What's not stopping me from stopping you having control of your bank? All right, your card. Because mm -hmm. all it is a couple of buttons on a presser, and you're you're skinned. Yeah. All right. So that's another worry for you guys. Hopefully, I'll be long gone before then. Because I'm all you. Well, they are, they do but they I do mean, want to bring in like you... they want to get rid of cash altogether. Exactly, and that's a big worry, honestly, personally, yeah. because they got control. Of yeah, that's my that serious look control. Look what they've done with the look what they've done in Canada. Look what they've done in Canada with them truckers that wanted to go to work, and they were vaccinated because he was doing the COVID. But they were protesting to say that they wanted, I can't remember what it was, pay or something, extra pay. And they blocked, because they were protesting, they blocked their cards. They, they, they stopped their bank, their bank accounts. accounts, yeah, they did. And they, they, yeah, you got they it, seized, yeah. uh, they actually seized money from like a GoFundMe page. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it, it. they it's seized, they seized yeah, yeah. the bank out of the GoFundMe page and just took the money. Yeah. That people are donated, yeah. the general public are donated so, to, this, to these tr truckers. So, so what I'm trying to say is, is that if I got a home that, without elect, with, that, that provides its own energy and what have you, and I got a garden that produces crops, do what you want, mate. You know, I'll work. I want to work, obviously, to get extra money if I want extra money. Or, or whatever, forever, forever reason. All right? But I'll do it on my terms. Yeah. You give me a deal that's worth me getting out of bed for. Otherwise, you can swear. <laughs> well, they don't, they don't want that. because they, 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 they don't want that because that's lack of control for them. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say, Josh. But the first start is your home. Mm. All right? Let's start with the home. Let's start with the most vulnerable. Then the then the the council will work out the council tenants will work out they want a bit of that, so the council tenants will have it, and then the private sector will have it because they want a bit of that because the council tenants got it, and then within five years, boom, uh, you've stopped the carbon emissions within the country, or well, ten years. Yeah. What's it? Uh, All right, we've been we've almost um, been going about an hour and a half. I'm gonna I'm gonna round up in about in about uh, yeah five or six minutes. Um, yeah. I, w I was going to ask you what would you do if you what would be your manifesto, but you've already answered that question. But I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like this uh, this pod this episode on the podcast has been extremely useful because we are painting a picture of what this country could be. You know, where yeah. like I see this podcast as a melting pot of ideas. And you've brought some yeah. ideas to the table today. Um, good ones, very good ones. And I'm doing a, a Q and A session on my on my on my documentary. I'll put it on your. I'll put it on the link. Yeah, well, you got the I can, documentary. Link, I you? can put your link to it's documentary in, yeah. in in this episode of your channel. Thanks. In this episode. Thank you, Josh. Just make sure you send it. I'm man. doing a Q and A around the country, so I can spread the word. <laughs> Have, do you All know right. how he was talking about this uh, yeah. this doctor um, in, in, he was talking about the NHS yes, do you know Dale. him personally or is he just, do you just know of him yes. yes you do know him personally do you want to talk to him about the NHS yeah I do I'd like to get him on the show um, maybe if you want if you like, if you want, how would you feel about doing a three person podcast me you and him all together Okay, but he's he's the man about NHS. All yeah, right. I, I'm the man. We're the men for sitting on the road, but he's the man about the NHS. Yeah, definitely, Josh. Well, people need to hear mm. his voice. All right, I'll get. I'll 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 through your his contact details after this. Um, as yeah. far as as far definitely. as rounding up girls, is there anything you've you'd like to any things you'd like to share or any campaign or campaigns or ideas that you've not shared yet that you would like to have shared on here today before we end. Wow, there's a number of them. Obviously, it's fuel poverty and 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 all Let's go that. through it. I'm, so I'm still in, I'm still in contact with um, I'm still in contact with the guys. Well, some people with the, with this, you know, the signal streams that we mm -hmm. got. I'm still in a couple of them. It's good to hear what they're doing. There's still XR in Gloucester, um, um, and I and praise to them. I just need to get personally. I just need to, yeah. I don't be selfish or nothing, but I'm just trying to get this project off the ground. The documentary. Um, and the doc. Yeah. But the importance of unions is, is, is tremendous. And we're all about unifying the, unifying the public. We need to unify the unions yes. as well. Uh, we're all in this, everyone, the planet and their homes, you know, the, the, it touches a nerve with everyone. It affects everyone. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do personally um, to unify the union, not unify the unions, but get them to let's unionize those that are not in work as well as those that are in work. Yes, because those that are in work are more likely to not be in work in the near let's future. Let's come. Let's convince the help. unions to use civil resistance as a as a as a tactic for their own means as well. <laughs> There, 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 there is that as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, a, a strike is a civil resistance in a way. It, it's a mild form of. Civil it is resistance. mild, but we could, have, but then you know, we could step it up a little bit. Yes, <laughs> right. but we need, yeah, we need to break. We need to to make the 
the shock and awe that they feel about the activist, less shock and awe and more, actually, there's no other way. Mm. You know what I mean? There's, there's, we, are, we are trying to help. All right, and uh, we feel we feel your we feel you know your 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 pain, um, and it's going to get worse. But yeah, that uh, I've made the networking I've done in the last twelve months, especially with the unions and what have you, uh, volunteer groups, the DPAC, you know, the the, the 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 guys that are. Can you imagine this? I don't. I think I forgot about this, Josh. Yeah, I met an individual, poor Paula, bless her, mm-hmm. disabled. And the number of them went to Parliament, some in wheelchairs, to protest in Parliament. And they got thrown out of their wheelchairs. No. All right. Aunt, yeah. All right. That's a, that, what a woman that is. You know what I mean? That, that she could talk as well. You get, and I said, I was get, being bragging. I've been on the M20. Would you help me get them? She said, well, actually, we had... Uh, yeah, yeah, certainly. Paulie, yeah, yeah. Paula, bless her, Tipa. There's so many individuals. It's, uh, it's the most vulnerable I'm, I'm talking about. These... I wouldn't ask my homeless guys to go on the M25. I was there speaking on their behalf or sat on there on their behalf. Mm-hmm. But it, from one time of being like 20 or 30 individuals that I knew of, there was actually at that point, uh, like I said, three and a half million living in fuel poverty. What a responsibility that is. And then uh, uh, by the time we got off that campaign, there was seven million. Oh. But you guys, well, the reason why, yeah, but you, the reason that you guys went on there... Which you could see the the fourth future of the of the climate, which is fucking billions of people. All right? Yeah. So, I'm as I'm as much in awe of you, if not more. You know what I mean? Because you could this is your future. Hopefully, well, I might be long, you know, gone long gone by then, but I don't know. But it's but the solidarity that we got between the youth and the old, it's got to be brought over by the fact that we got to we got to build bridges mm. between the most impoverished to the working class. And the working class to the activists, because don't uh, the, the other thing? I, yeah, the other thing I'd like to finish on here is that you will always hear that Labour was bought up by the unions. Yeah. If it wasn't for the unions, there wouldn't be a Labour Party. Well, let me tell you for a fact what they won't tell you. If it wasn't for the activists, there wouldn't be a union, and that's what Toll Puddle's all about. They were activists, all right, mm-hmm. and they became a union, which then established years after, hundred years after, to be the Labour Party. So it all starts where we are. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. yeah, but I like that. And okay. they've hijacked. They've since hijacked the Labour Party. But um, oh yeah, let's make well, a new one. Yeah. Let's make a kiddie star. Let's make a new party. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you know, sometimes I, I, yeah, it's funny, can I say one more thing? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I feel like the yeah. history is like being on a roundabout. You round and round you go. You know, like. With history repeating itself every yeah. few hundred years, like movements rising, movements falling, activists doing this, you know, socialist movements rising, then big repression by governments and imprisonment, then war, then something else happens, then there's a pandemic, yeah. then it's something else. Like, you know, <laughs> the history does, it seems to repeat itself, but the one you, thing that will never repeat itself you, is the climate crisis, mm. because that is a, fi- a Final point. Exactly. Uh, what was you going to exactly. say then? I I, I I don't know if you know of the the one person that told me about the NHS was was Doctor Bob Gill. The other one that, that told me you're having a laugh, Steve. There's plenty of money in this country. That's not the issue. Was Chris Williamson? Mm. Oh, I don't know if you heard of him. There might be others, but I know that him and on the economy. He just blew me away. He said, it's a myth. And a lot of people are saying this. It's a myth. You just print money. But I'm just saying it as a layman. I, don't, I can't put technical terms to mm-hmm. it. But how do, you, how do you figure out? It makes sense because how do you figure out that we were in austerity from 2008 when the banks went pop and we paid them all off, all right, to going through all that in all that hardship from 2008 and all the cuts to the nhs and god knows what all the public it had to be the public services didn't it all of the public services mm-hmm. and then suddenly we had covid nobody in work and we paid everyone up for not going to work yeah and then we had another war we had the money was there since 2010 yeah exactly it was there all the time but chris explains it better than me yeah so money is not an issue when they say to me i want to end homeless it's, I it's priorities nobody will say they'll end Do you about priorities no yeah nobody 
I'll tell you what, Josh, right? Nobody will end homeless because they haven't got a clue how to do it, all right? That's the reason why. Not because they haven't got the money, they just haven't got the template. Steve for Prime Minister. And anyone that comes up with a decent... You've got a template. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I'll certainly point them on the right direction, all right? And many others will as well, all right? Because there's other ideas going around as well. Yeah. But if they can beat this one... All right. If they can beat not only saving the homeless but saving the planet, then that's off to them. I'll tip that to them. But I haven't heard one yet, not once. Mm -hmm. All right. But and that's why I'm struggling. I'm not, I'm not struggling, but I mean, it's a, I've gone through all the normal channels. Yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, sir. And it just gets stopped. All right. Give me fifty grand, and I'll end homelessness in this country. Fifty grand. Right. End of. All right. Yeah, 50 grand. Give me 50 grand. I'll end homeless. How? 50,000 right. pounds? The temp... Yeah. How do you end homelessness at 50,000 pounds? That's not a lot of money. <coughs> right. <coughs> I've just told you. There's a unit, right? Yeah, but if it, how many houses... That can be yeah, but how many houses are you going to need? And whoa, how, whoa, on how on many set. units? I've got to prove it first. Yeah. So, yeah. right. So, how much do it cost per unit? I could build one unit. Because, hang on a sec, slow down, Sorry, yeah. right? It's not my responsibility, right? It's not my responsibility to save lives, all right? It's Can I ask you another question? Yeah? Can... So they... Sorry, I'm, I'm quite... So they Go got on. a contract to save mm -hmm. lives. What were they spending their money on now, I believe, will save some lives, but not all, all right? This will not only save lives, this will save the planet, all right? And I'm saying from a template, of, it's like... Yeah, a template of a unit that doesn't need planning permission, so I could drop it anywhere I want mm -hmm. to, yeah? This is the goal. I've got to prove it first. This is why the template is... A question. Points. If I can provide a... How yeah, much would one? it cost to build one unit, do you think? Uh, if you wanted a million of them... N not okay. one of them. Like, well, for one, for a start. Let's say, say, let's say you, you want a million of them, so you're mass-producing them, but like per unit, yeah. how much do you think it would cost? All right. Well, there's 270,000 people homeless in this country. Right. So I'd want 270,000 built. Well, I'd want yeah. more. I'd want, I'd want 500,000 built. It's like, there's room for growth. Okay, all right, 500,000. Well, obviously, I think after the template's built, which obviously is going to cost about 50, 50 grand, all right? So I would say cut out uh. 20 grand of that. Mm. 20 grand, so you're talking about 30, 30, 25 grand per unit. All right, once it's mass produced. I think you can get down even right. further. And you can pull that any, you can, you can drop that anywhere in the country for two years. Now I'm talking about people that need supported living, mm. all right? So that you'd have to have a number of units. I'm talking about three or four units to be able to, to be able to live on, all right? So you're talking about quarter of an acre, I don't know, less than that. Quarter of an acre or less. I don't know what's less than a quarter of an acre. Fifth of an acre or whatever. All right, uh, to put three units on mm -hmm. there. You put that on brownfield sites because this, no one in this country will let you plant anything on green and pleasant lands because they're all tourists. So we'll have to be a brownfield site. So you build there, and you put raised beds on so you grow your plants and what have you. You've got a unit there that, that is producing enough electricity to be surplus to requirements. That's using solar and wind. All right. If you're living next to a river, even better, put a gyro mm -hmm. in the river. All right, you're just you're just basically an ele electrical supplier, yeah. Mm -hmm. You pump that into the grid, you put plug into the grid, so you're not drawing any electric off. The purpose of that is to put electric in. Imagine if all houses all right? did that. And then what you exactly? All right, it gets better. All right, it gets better. Listen to this. Rather than um, and then what you do is is say to the the electrical distributor. And this is when I'll go back on the road because they'll say no. They go to the electrical distributor and say, right, how much of electric have I put in here? And they'll say, oh, Mr. Gow, you put over £2,000 worth in. I'll say, okay. And they'll say, right, we'll give you uh, one and a half grand for that. I'll say, no, I don't want one and a half grand. And they go, what? Right, I'll say, you've had £2,000 worth of electric, all right, that I've provided you. You've already made a markup on that, all right? So you probably made about, you probably say it's about three and a half grand. Mm -hmm. All right, it doesn't matter how much it is. All I want is the two grand, but I don't want it in electric. I don't want it in, in money. I want it in electric. I want it in units, watts. So they'll tell me the wattage. 
and I'll say, right, transfer, transfer that wattage to Josh's account because he's living in fuel poverty and he can't turn on his electric fire this winter. All right? Mm. And that'll go straight into your account and you turn your electric So, you, so basically the savings right. you'd, say, you'd see from these eco units could just directly go to reducing the, the, the bills yeah. of the people who are living in fuel poverty. I like it. Yeah, or wipe them out. If you've got a year's... Say you're in debt, right? Because you've got a pop-up meter, a top-up meter, which is a, a killing machine, all right? Which is these smart meters that you, you've got to top up with a card, yeah? Or top up with a, an app, all right? They're killing machines, yeah? So I'd have a look at your... I, you, you'd come to me and say, Josh, it's Steve. I'm fucking scared, man. I can't afford to put... I can't afford to put the electric in my meter. Right, Josh, how much does it cost you for a, a, a month's supply of electricity? And you'll say, I don't know, 300 quid. I'll go, all right then, hang on a sec, bang. You're topped up. Mm. All right, you've got a month's supply of electric. And in that month's supply, right, you come up to me again in two months' time and say, Steve, I need some more. And I'll say, bloody hell, Josh, what's going <laughs> on? You've got your council flat, you've got your council flat, and you can't even afford to bloody run it, in, you know, run electric. Why haven't you insulate? Why haven't the council insulated your property and put you solar panels on? Like they promised before you were even fucking born. All right? So uh, then lobby the council. Mm -hmm. All right? And then you get the council to insulate and, and, and retrofit your flat. Because I got proof that you can't even afford to, you can afford to live in it because the council's paying you because the the council do, you know, pay your rent or whatever, and uh, but you can't afford to eat and eat and keep warm in the winter or eat and keep warm mm. because you are, you can't afford to top up your meter. You've got to pay for food that you can't heat. All right, and then you get your house insulated because it's not just Josh. There's fifty or sixty other people in your block of flats that bloody got the same problem. That's how you insulate your houses. All right, because you show somebody that. Hang on a sec. Steve, weren't you on the street the other week and I was giving you 50p a couple of years ago because you were homeless? Yeah, I was, but now I'm not. I'm living in this accommodation and I'm giving you electric mm -hmm. back. That's the scenario I want. That's the scenario. Where's little Johnny? Little Johnny, I used to give 50p a, you know, or a coffee every day. Oh, he's not here no more. Yeah, is he? What, is he dead? No, he's all right. He's actually got a property now. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and he doesn't pay any utility bills. What? He doesn't pay no utility bills? No. Hmm. Fucking hell, I like Johnny, but I didn't realise he was that going to be that well off. I want some of that. Well, you can. Get your fucking house insulated, all right? And retrofitted, like the council said they would do, 30 years, 20-odd years ago. People can't insulate their own home. Not, not everyone can insulate their own home. So this is why we need a national yeah. refit, you know, tr a true national yeah. refit um, scheme. So, but, but what but a big one. If the government won't, Josh, if the, Josh, Josh, if the government won't do it, I frigging will, all right, with all the poor people that I know of that are homeless in my town. And if Boris Johnson or Liz Truss or whoever the fucking Rishi Sunak, whoever it is, and whoever it will be next week, comes into Parliament, it'll already be done in Gloucester in the next year, all right? Because boys will be there, or men will be there, or homeless people will be there in a cabin, a unit, producing electricity, the surplus to requirement, and they'll be putting money into the grid, and they'll be handing it out, so the homeless will be helping the working class. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I can. Um, yeah. This is and then you get things. Steve, done. I'm going to uh, I'm going to round <laughs> us up here because we've got, we've gone on well over yeah. uh, quite a long time. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, no, it's okay. It just um, it is Friday night and it's getting getting on a bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, is there any last thing you want to say before we round? Like last last minute. It's been great seeing you again Josh I, I remember seeing you towards the end of the campaign because you were in a different group and all what have you a different block but I never I'll always remember you on top of that bus with Steph <laughs> all right yeah and that vision of the cliffs behind you oh. I'm thinking you jammy buggers all right what a cracking block <laughs> I missed there <laughs> no comment no comment no comment right. <laughs> it was picturesque yeah. oh my god it was a beautiful day Beautiful. It's a be Dover and the White Cliffs is a very beautiful area. Especially yeah. when you've got a view of the ocean. For six yeah, hours. Definitely. But thanks, mate. 
All right, thanks for the memories. No worries. <laughs> I don't like speaking like this all the time. <laughs> um, right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end there. So um, a, a gal says, but if you've watched all the way through and you find you find this genuinely interesting, please do everything you can to help share share our channel and get and find us quality guests and and also if you see little snippets that you thought were really good, you can comment with a timestamp of what those snippets were, and I'll make them to YouTube Shorts. Um, but make sure, if you're watching this, remember to like and subscribe and uh, help us out because we're only a small channel. Um, yeah, and sending love to everybody who's watching. Brilliant. We are the tongue that speaks the truth. We are the song upon the wind. We are the courage to stand forth. We are the change that now begins. On this good green earth, we will take a stand with an open heart and a healing hand. With an open heart and a healing hand.